Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And we're we're excited about our podcast episode today. We have a, a a great evangelist here with us, Brother Austin Griffiths is with us, and we just appreciate him. He's our friend, preached revivals for us and different services for us, and he's doing a great work for God, and we're just thrilled to have him uh, on our podcast today. So uh, it's great to have you, Brother Austin. Well, thank you for inviting me and having me on your podcast. Amen, yes, and we... Uh, you are from the Vanceburg Holiness Church, am I correct? Yes, sir. Pastor is? Curtis Cordell. Do you know him pretty well? Well, he's my father-in-law, too. So. Yeah. You went down there and stole his daughter. Yeah, that's how, that's what he says. <laughs> First time I ever met him, he said, you used to be in the Army. I said, yes. I hadn't been out very long at that <laughs> yeah. time. And uh, I said, yes, sir. He said, so you like guns? I said, yes. He said, I've got a lot of them. <laughs> First thing you ever told me. Oh, mercy. Yeah, well, Brother brother Coral's a great uh, man, a great pastor. And I was just talking to Brother Austin a few moments ago about uh, his father-in-law. And Brother Austin loves his father-in-law and mother-in-law and so much. And he's been working out of the church there. How long have you been actually working out of that church? Well... I actually moved there. I think it was in March of 2013. Uh, me and Kelly Cordell at the time, uh, we had got engaged in January uh-huh. of 13, and uh, we was going to get married in August, and we pushed it up. We was just ready. Yeah. Uh, my father-in-law had co-signed for me. Yeah. And uh, he helped us buy a house, um, our first house and our only house to this yeah. day. And uh, and so I lived there and got a job there in March of 13 and uh and then we got married in June. Yeah. So almost 10 years. Wow. I know God has really blessed you and Kelly and he's blessed your ministry uh a lot and we're going to talk about your ministry in a moment but first just mention a little bit about uh Sister Kelly. She's a she's a great singer. Yes, she is. And she's got some she's my uh, favorite singer. She's your favorite? <laughs> Well, that's good. You should think that. <laughs> and Kelly really is a great singer, and she's anointed. Yes. Uh, we had you here for revival last around last year Easter time. I think is that correct? I think yeah. it's around Easter. Yeah. It's two weeks before camp meeting. Yeah, two weeks. <laughs> so we we had a move of God. We had a great Easter Easter services and and revival, and then we're almost right into camp meeting. Yeah. But I know that. Uh, uh, God's blessed her, and she's a she's a great singer, like we said. And and her and her brother Zach Cordell, uh, they they've done a lot of singing together. Yes. And how many how many CDs? I know they got quite a few. Well, before my time of getting there, I think it was like oh nine or ten somewhere around there. Uh, they had made a CD together and recorded in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd have to ask them about the details because yeah. that was before. Before uh, I had got around with them, and then uh, they we did a choir CD yes. together. Um, we actually played the music ourselves, yeah, and the singing ourselves, and recorded that in uh, Wheelersburg, Ohio. And then they had done another CD together, yeah, um, several years later in Tennessee, the same place yes. you did there at right. the family room. And then we did another choir CD uh, several years ago there at the family room also so just out of the church they've done two choirs and two of just them two together then zach's been on multiple um, oh, yeah. with you other than that as well, well. zach's been on two of mine two so, cds of mine and, and yeah they're they're great they're they're just great together their chemistry is just unbelievable actually and they're they're some of my favorite singers too and we we really love them and before we get into your ministry part, uh, would you mind sharing how they could get your music? I know they can get it online at all kinds of yeah. places. So everywhere that you can get Brother Miller's music, we go through both Cantor Media. Yeah. 
So over 600 media sites. Yes. You can type in Vanceburg Holiness Church, which is V-A-N-C-E-B-U-R-G, Holiness Church, or you can type in Kelly and Zach. Now, Kelly spelled with an I at the end, and then, of course, Zach, Z-A-C-H. And so yeah. you can type in either one of those, and they should. there's two CDs on there to pick from, and they can get them those way. Well, they ought to get them all. I've got them all, actually. I, I bought them all through iTunes. I know you can get them at iTunes, mm-hmm. and they are great. I listen to them a lot, and I just I just really uh, love their singing. And you really ought to get them. Look at them, look them up on iTunes, and uh, under under Kelly and Zach, spell her name exactly. It's K E L L I. K E L L I, and Zach. Zach C A C H. All right. Yes. So. You ought, to, you ought to go and buy them there or stream them. Uh, either one is that's best for you. And so also I want to say this uh, uh, about Brother Austin here before we get in into his ministry once again too much. But he's, he's a really good evangelist. And how would they go about getting a hold of you, Brother, if they wanted you for revival? That would just be my cell phone would be the best way. You care to give it out? or oh, I don't mind. Okay. It's uh, 606-541-6806. All right. Or you could you could even get in touch with me, and I could yeah. give it to him if you don't, don't feel comfortable with uh, calling him. So I know that if he comes, he'll be a blessing to you and your church in revival. Or, he, or if he's in the area, he could come for three or four nights sometime. But anyway, I want to I want to get into your ministry and talk to you a little bit about uh, when the Lord first called you to preach and when you first felt that call to evangelize. Well, uh, my story is a little different than everyone else's. Yeah, and uh, I guess first go first place to start would be when I got saved. Yes, and I grew up. I'm an Ohio boy. Hey, that's and good. So, <laughs> I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, for most of my childhood, I attended the Dryden Road Pentecostal Church, yeah. where Brother Sutherland is the pastor and still is. He's been there over 40 years Long as well. Time, yes. And uh, and so I spent most of my childhood time there. I spent a very small amount of time, um, probably just a, around a year or so, at the Highway of Holiness, not too far from here. Brother Jerry Pascarillo was a pastor at that time. And... Um, like a lot of young folks, I was struggling with a lot of different things at home at the time. Um, there was, I'm not going to go into it because we're online, but just a lot of things at home wasn't going the greatest, and uh, I wasn't where I needed to be as well, so I'm not trying to make excuses. And, yes, uh, right. I battled a lot of uh, bitterness and rebellion, and I just never really got a hold of it. Yeah, I went through all my teenage years and in and out. I was man, I was really in at youth camp. Yeah, but if you caught me in December, I was really out. There's a lot and, of uh, young men and women like so that. So I was really, really a lot like that. Yes. And by the time I got around 18, I was in my senior year in high school, and uh, me and my family didn't see eye to eye on pretty much anything. And so I joined the army and ran, and uh, and and so that's kind of what I did. So I backslid. For about two and a half years, and you can go, you can do a lot of things in two and a half years. Yeah, okay. So without going into it, for the sake of time and for the sake of my own privacy, yes. <laughs> and uh, I just, I got in a dark, dark place spiritually. I never ever wanted to go to church again. I loved the church. I, my heart had always been at Dryden Road. I loved the people. I never wanted to leave. That wasn't my choice. Um, I was out of my control. You know, I wasn't yes. eighteen, so I. You know, as, as, uh, anyways, right. but, um, and so I, I ran, I ran, I ran. I never wanted anything to do with God anymore. I believed in him. I knew hell was real, but I just, the devil puts you in a spot that's just yes. hard to, hard to under, hard to explain. And he just took me so far and you could say, well, you're in the army. You couldn't have went too far. If you've never been in the military, you don't understand. Yeah. You can almost do anything you want to in the military. You could then. Now, this has been a long time ago now, yeah. but uh, I'm 31. I'm talking when I was 19, 20, 21, or 18 to 20. So, anyways, I had uh, got out of the military. I'd spent right at two years in the Army on a couple different bases. That wasn't a very long stint. I didn't go overseas, and I believe God really had his hand in that, and I'll get to that in a second. 
but I had come back to Ohio, um, Kettering specifically, in about May of 2012, and I had joined in June of 10, so it was right at two years, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah, you know, I was out, and I could I could have rejoined again if I wanted to, and um, I was having some uh, some health issues. I had really hurt my my leg, and so I was really having to deal with that. And uh, in the military is part of the reason why I had gotten out. Um, but long story short, I had, you know, all my evil and worldly influences were gone. Yeah. Because I was I was raised going to church. And so I was hanging out with church people again. I was yeah. backslid. Right. And one of those is uh, was Todd Hatcher. And he's a local pastor yeah. here. Yeah, good uh, pastor. In Hamilton, just not too far from here, about 20 minutes. We grew up together. And so he'd come over all the time. Yeah. And he was a preacher. And I was backslid, drinking alcohol, and uh, doing some marijuana, and just being stupid. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I can say that on your yeah. podcast. Yeah. And uh, so I was just backslid and rebellious, and you know, my grandma was after me, my mom had been after me to come to church, and I just, I just didn't want to. I just yeah. didn't have my heart into it. So long story short, um, it come to about September. I was right at getting ready to turn twenty one. And I, like I said, I'd been out since I was 18. I'd been through a lot in three in three years. I'd been a lot of places all over the country in the military. Been through a lot, seen a lot, and I just didn't feel like I was a little kid at home anymore. I'd been through quite a bit in three years, and I just had no intentions of doing it. But I got so miserable. I remember in being in my apartment by myself. I made ten dollars an hour at a local factory. You know, they didn't pay you like they do now. Yeah, but right. things didn't cost as much as they do now yeah, either. Yeah, right. But um, I remember laying on my kitchen floor crying, and I just called my mom. I said, I am miserable. Why even live life when you're this miserable? She said, well, you know you need to go back to church. You know you know exactly what you need to do. Yes. And Todd Hatcher, he stayed at the apartment sometimes, and I often wondered. He still lived at home. He's five years younger than me, and I was 21, so he still lived at home. And there was alcohol in the fridge, cigarettes laying everywhere, ungodly stuff everywhere. I had just, I, I just was a sinner. I was rebellious. Yeah, right. And I, I asked his dad one time, I said, why'd you let him come over? His dad's a big old guy. Yeah. And he said, I knew where you was at. I knew I could trust <laughs> you. Right, yeah. But it was all God working because he preached to me constantly. And anybody that knows him, he is a pusher and he's a preacher. Yeah. And he preached to me all the time. I mean, he about bugged me to death, but we was raised together, and so I loved him. I really did. Yeah. So long story short, we went to the highway one night in camp meeting, and I drove him. He sat up front, and I sat in the back, <laughs> and uh, I was backslid, and Brother Joey Hyatt was preaching. And, I mean, he had me under conviction so bad I had to go outside and smoke some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't get saved that night, but I did the next morning. And uh, I couldn't take it no more. Yeah. The next Joey morning, was quite a preacher. The next morning in my apartment, probably 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning on my couch, I just got on my knees and I got saved. And I've never smoked a cigarette since that second. Praise I've God. I've never drank a drop of alcohol since that second. And actually it's funny because me and Kelly had met several years prior. And uh, so we knew each other. Well, she was there that night at the Highway of Holiness at that camp meeting. We yeah. actually talked in the fellowship hall uh -huh. and she liked me and i knew she did you could tell and yeah. i liked her it was obvious you know yeah. there were sparks there but i was backslid yeah and so zach hated my guts <laughs> <laughs> my brother-in-law and Forgive since me, now we're, help laugh. we're very very good friends we talk all the time and uh but he was not for that yeah he was saying get away from him <laughs> and uh so long story short i can see zach doing yeah. that you know i was backslid yeah, rebellious right. get away from him I texted her the next morning, and I told her I got saved. And she told me later um, that night. It's a funny story, and she could tell it better. But she was so tore up about seeing me that she had gotten in the back seat of that church van on the way home back to Vanceburg and cried and cried and cried, praying that God would save me. And the next morning I did, and I didn't know that till later. Yeah. And uh, so we was in revival a while back teasing. And she was telling that story, and some of them young single girls were like, wow, that's something. And one of them spoke up and said, who's got the keys to the church van? Let's go in the back seat and pray. Oh, so. I'm trying not to laugh, but I, <laughs> so, I could just see those teenage yeah. girls. They were like, if that works, I'm yeah, going to do it. Where's the church van keys? Yeah. So anyways, that's, so I'd gotten saved and I'd moved to Vanceburg 
And uh, I don't know how much you want me to tell, but I really battled in my mind, Brother, Brother Miller, because Zach sings, Kelly sings. Zach played the piano and the drums. Kelly played the bla- the bass, the guitar, and the drums uh, yeah. sometimes. And I didn't do nothing. I couldn't preach. I couldn't play no instruments. Couldn't sing. And I just didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't. They'd play Bible games about trivia, and I didn't really know none of the answers. Yeah. I mean, I was raised in a holiness church, but never paid attention. But you're a good drummer now, right? And, well, that came later. Okay, okay. <laughs> I won't say I'm good, but I, well, I did I pick, pick good, it up yeah. a little bit. But long story short, um, I battled that. I really did. And I didn't tell her. I didn't tell nobody. Yeah. I said, maybe she'll move here. Well, that was just, you know, that yeah. was just me thinking. Um, but her dad told me she wasn't moving, as, yeah. <laughs> as any dad's going to yeah, say. Yeah, right. But I really battled that. But at this time, I had started going to Vanceburg almost every weekend. Mm-hmm. I was hardly ever at my home church. Yeah. And uh pastor probably didn't like that. But <laughs> anyways, uh, my father-in-law now come up to me, and he got in my ear one night, and he prophesied right in my ear. Didn't know I didn't tell nobody. He said, God said he's got to work for you right here. And so I knew it was God because he wasn't going to prophesy in his no. flesh and say, you need to marry my daughter because he no wanted way. to keep her. Yeah. So, anyways, that that battle was gone, and since then, yeah, just fast forwarding since then, they really needed another drummer because yeah. they sang all over the place, and they wanted somebody that knew their songs and could play. So we practiced countless amount of hours to get me to know what I was doing, and finally we got to where them two singing and me playing the drums was very in sync yeah. everywhere we went, and it really, really helped. And then I really helped out in the youth group youth group a lot we drove the van everywhere we went to every meeting we possibly could and god really did have a work for me right there yes i believe it i know god's god's uh god's really blessed you and i i i can't remember all of that but i can remember a lot of that and i i know i've watched your material level has just been unreal and i mean matter of fact uh from the first time i heard you preach was always you were always a good preacher but actually i mean when you held us revival last year i was uh, like wow where'd this come from you know and you you really yeah. blessed our church and i appreciate the kind words and i know when you uh, we went to youth camp to hear you preach when you was preaching nights at uh at brother baker's youth camp yes sir and uh and you've done outstanding and then i think Devin stayed a couple other days and he said, uh, of course, I'm his granddad. He yeah. said, Papa, have you really heard Austin <laughs> preach? He said, he is a great preacher. And and so you've been a blessing to our church. Our church well, really appreciates you. I really you. appreciate the kind words. They do. They appreciate you. Kelly Kelly always wanted to be in the ministry, and she didn't marry a preacher. Yeah. I hadn't even been saved a year when we got married. Right. And uh, back in church. And she didn't marry a, a preacher and she, I told her one time, she said, I always wanted to be in the ministry. And I said, you married the wrong cat for that. Yeah. And since then, God called us to preach. And I pretty much knew from that, from that calling that we was going to start, we was going to evangelize at some point in our life. And there's a lot of things I could tell you, but for the sake of time, I won't. But I was really praying about preaching and God sent a preacher by and really lit that fire on. I mean, really lit it. Yes. And I prayed about it and fasted and wrestled with god about seven months and i gave in and uh we was a lay preacher for about three years and then uh, we've been evangelizing now for three and a half years yeah i knew it'd been a while you've been evangelizing and it's it's not an easy road it's uh evangelistic work some people think they see a preacher and they think wow that's a life for me because they just think of you know traveling across the country and and everything yeah. they think is just great but everything Everything's really not just great all the time. And things, it's it's a. I don't want to say they discourage you. You want to listen, <laughs> but it can be a yeah. challenge. You have to be called. That's yeah. the That's bottom it. line. Yeah. If you're not called, absolutely do not do it. Right. Because it's one of the. It is in a lot of ways the hardest thing we've ever done. Yeah. And it'll bring you and your spouse closer. And uh, I mean, it just evangelizing tests everything. It does. It tests your spiritual life. It tests your. You know your relationship with your spouse and yeah your, i've got five children for those of you that don't know me they're seven and under so you yeah. can imagine what that's like 
all seven of us living in a 40 foot trailer yeah and uh i know 40 foot sounds like it's long but that's only half as long as an 80 foot single wide that's right so yeah. And yeah. when you put it in that perspective yeah. it's not as big as what you think yeah if you're taking a two-week <laughs> vacation it's terrific yeah but when you're living there every day it's it's not when you're much room. messing with frozen water pipes and sewer lines you don't have to deal with that in the house yeah anybody feel like evangelizing now <laughs> oh i could tell the stories <laughs> i know you could yes oh. you could i know but i i have watched how god has blessed you and blessed your ministry and i feel like god's really got his hand on you brother austin i do i sure appreciate and that we, we have just... a, a great amount of confidence in you and I, I really do. I appreciate you and your wife so much. And you've been a blessing to me and a blessing to my church. And we appreciate you. And I really wish, I, I really wish some, some of you, uh, if there's a pastor or a youth pastor listening, if you could talk to your pastor and see about getting this brother to come by and preach for you, you would be blessed. If you could have the ministry of Brother Austin Griffiths uh, at your church preaching for you. So I hate that our time has come and gone, but I've really enjoyed having you with us, Brother Austin. I today. appreciate you having us on. Yes, sir. And maybe we can get you to come back. Can you come you're back? You're the boss. All right. <laughs> so, hey, wait, say that one more time. Maybe my wife's listening. I said, you're the boss. All right. Praise God. If she's listening. I don't know. She might be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, God bless you, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.